members of a gang of armed robbers have been jailed after a wave of violent attacks on security guards refilling cash machines. They use guns, knives, hammers and crowbars to terrorise staff before fleeing in a fleet of stolen vehicles and leaving few clues behind them. When banknotes got stained by security dye, they laundered the cash through fixed odds, betting terminals and bookies. They took advantage of a system that allowed punters to load a machine with up to £3,000 in cash, making a little bet and then collecting their unspent stake in fresh notes from the shop's cash till. They also burnt piles of stained banknotes and a car that got sprayed when they smashed open one case box and triggered the die security system. Armed police ambushed two robbers, Abdi Omar and Brooklyn McFarlane, as they were about to attack security guards at a local Sainsbury's in Wimbledon. Omar was caught quickly while McFarlane ran and pulled a knife and was shot by police who believed he was carrying a gun. He was discharged from hospital the following day. The gang were caught after a bit of detective work by the Met Police's flying squad who from poor CCTV quality camera footage managed to identify and track one of their stolen cars and the first of the robbers who eventually led them to the rest. So the investigation began as detectives picked over the few clues left by two robbers who pounced at midnight on guards entering a nationwide bank in Tooting in South London back in June 2018. The guards were carrying around £120,000 in cash to put into a cash point. The robbers wore black clothing, body armour, masks and gloves. They left no DNA or fingerprints. Internal CCTV cameras revealed no distinguishing features. CCTV outside the High Street Bank showed nothing of the robbers at all or any getaway vehicle. The front of the bank was hidden from cameras by the parked cash van. Also obscured was a door right behind the bank's entrance. Detectives were puzzled and they concluded the robbers must have arrived and departed on foot through that other door. The door led to a block of flats and via a fire escape to a supermarket car park and a network of side streets. CCTV cameras there picked up the two suspects walking at around the time of the robbery. Another camera further away showed them arriving in a dark sports utility vehicle but the picture quality was so poor the number plate was unreadable and the car's make and model uncertain. Detective Constable Stephen O'Connell said it looked like an Audi Q7 or something similar but you can see it's not an Audi from close inspection of the wing mirrors, the types of alloy wheels on it and the shape of the bonnet badge and the grille. In a bid to identify the car, he asked for footage from all traffic cameras with automatic number plate recognition within a 4 km range of the bank. The copper explained how the investigation progressed. He said, we were confident that it was a Skoda Kodiak SUV but we couldn't read the number plate. The NPR camera search revealed that there was a Skoda Kodiak travelling in one of the side streets close to the bank minutes after the robbery. The traffic camera showed a clear number plate which belonged to a Skoda Kodiak advertised on Auto Trader from a showroom in Birmingham. He said, I spoke to the manager there and he's certain that this vehicle hasn't been in London. It's sitting in his dealership and is locked in. He's got the keys at home. So the gang had obviously seen his advert in Auto Trader, and they copied the number plate and put it on another Skoda Kodiak. The reason the gang copied a genuine number plate from a registered blue Skoda Kodiak instead of a white Ford Focus was in case the car was stopped by police for any reason. A check on the number plate would show police it belonged to a blue Skoda Kodiak and that should be enough to allay any suspicion. There was a more detailed check on the gang Skoda and it would reveal it had the wrong number plate but that was a calculated risk. The next thing the flying squad did was to troll through local crime logs to find a Skoda Kodiak that had been stolen. They planned to search back two months but they quickly found one stolen in Wimbledon a fortnight before the robbery. AMPR cameras showed the car being driven around for an hour after it was stolen but then it disappeared. Police then contacted the Skoda headquarters in the Czech capital Prague where the company keeps a record of every car it manufactures. Skoda gave detectives the unique code for the stolen car's satellite navigation system. The code allowed the sat-nav to work by connecting to telecommunications masts rather than mobile phones. Detectives asked the sat-nav's telecoms provider for the car's data history. The data wasn't as precise as they hoped but it showed the sat-nav was turned off somewhere in Wimbledon, not far from where the Skoda was stolen. The flying squad flooded the area with undercover officers but they couldn't find the car parked on the streets. Then they knocked on a door of a concierge at a new block of flats with a secure shuttered underground car park. In the car park 
was a blue Skoda Kodiak, but it had a different number plate from the one of the Skoda used in the robbery. A check on the vehicle identification number inside the car showed that the stolen Skoda was the one that they were looking for. The cop said, so we're thinking, why have they just changed the number plates on it again? They have just abandoned this car, they've parked it up, they've plated it, they must be going to use it again. So rather than just seize it and take the opportunity to take DNA and fingerprints from it, he said we'll leave it there and keep observations on it and we'll see who comes to it. But they didn't have to wait for that. When they checked the recent car park CCTV, it showed a man driving, parking residence bay 248, appeared to change the Skoda's number plates and then climbed the stairs to the flats above. A check with the blocks manager showed a resident with the parking bay was a man called David Tesfilim. He said we look at the name David Tesfilim and lo and behold he has previous convictions for armed robbery. He said the gang had been clever but not so clever enough for us. Detective Superintendent Simon Mooring said they had a well crafted organised gang structure. They displayed a real good trade craft using stolen vehicles, clone number plates, they knew a lot about police tactics, used good anti-surveillance techniques so that they knew what they were doing. They were a forceful gang. The violence was extreme. Security guards were thrown around, hit with iron bars, guns held to their heads. Thankfully, no one got seriously hurt. They would have just carried on committing robberies and who knows where and how it would have ended. So the gang attacked guards at cash points in London, Oxford, Bedfordshire and Northamptonshire, usually congregating and travelling from an estate in South London. Armed with loaded handguns and other weapons, they wore ballistic body armour and balaclavas. Over 18 months, they stole more than £400,000. So the first two robbers identified were arrested after jumping a red light and crashing into a bus. They ran off, but they were chased and caught by a team of detectives who were trailing them. While awaiting trial, the two shared a cell in Wandsworth Prison and police later discovered they had smuggled in a mobile phone and used it to coordinate more robberies committed by those who were yet to be caught. So, in the first of two trials, Basil Abdul Latif, who's 36 from South London, the gang's leader, was jailed for 22 years for conspiracies to rob, possess a firearm with intent to cause fear of violence and handle stolen goods and arson. The second main gang member, David Tesfalim, who's 30 from South London, was jailed for 20 years for similar offences. Ibrahim Liazi, who's 29 from West London, got 18 years, and two others, Ihab Ashwai, who's 30, and Adam Salman, who's 32, were each jailed for 14 years. Ola Alerabaja was jailed for 13 years. There's four other men that have been sentenced today, which is McFarlane, Hashi, Abdi Omar, and Norman Amin. Once their sentences come through, I'll put in the descriptions below. Absolute madness, it's your boy GZ. Keep it locked, keep it real.